gracious. Got it. Graciously and magnanimously has offered her expertise to help you develop compelling applications. And that's a word that's really great to keep in your mind, compelling applications. Because you know the committee's just going to be swamped with applications. So what what are what are what are you going to be putting out there in front of them that is going to be compelling? That's the big question. Also with us today is a tremendous asset to you, Marsha Lesky, and she's the director at Optica uh, for diversity and inclusion and volunteer um, uh, cultivation. So let me let me do. I need my optics for this. Let me do this for the uh, for her role in the in the uh, scholars program. Let me just read if this is okay with you, Marsha what you wrote in your email when I asked, what's, what's exactly your role? She says, for the Optica Women's Scholars Program, I will manage the application process and the review committee. Wow, what a resource today for you. I will also work with Optica staff on visibility of the winners. So that, that is a big plus to this program. She's Marsha goes on to say, I'm so looking forward to this. One of my favorite things about my job is learning about the incredible women in optics, especially those students who give me so much hope for the future. I totally agree, Marsha. Thank you very much. So in order to give you plenty of time to interact with the, with the real resources, let me go through a couple of slides that Optica put together uh, for this presentation. So now we can go to the first one, which is a bit comical. This is a this is a picture that was taken before I say most of you were born. Unless you have celebrated your 40th birthday, uh, this was this photo was taken before you were born, and it 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 reflects. Um, I guess I could say an awkward time for women in optics. So this is a PR shot where I worked in the laboratory, Air Force Research Laboratory. Where I worked, the PR folks wanted to put together a brochure, recruiting brochure, you know, come here, work on our laboratory. And they wanted to photograph the woman in, in the laboratory, the, the senior staff person in the laboratory. Well, they, they actually didn't tell me it was a laboratory. They said they wanted to do portrait shots, so I dressed for the office. They insisted on, hey, let's go to the lab, and insisted on taking a picture of me with, can you believe it? liquid silver jewelry in an optics lab, in a laser lab, high voltage, lots of glints, and so forth. And when, and when I insisted on, this is not how we actually look in our natural habitat. We have a lab jacket. When I wanted to put on my lab jacket, they uh, absolutely nixed it. And you know what? I caved and I regret it to this day. So let's get on to the next slide, please. That was then, this is now. So this is the good news. So meet, if you don't already know, our first two Optical Women Scholars, Madeline Bergay and Serena Grijalva. Grijalva. Did I say that okay, Serena? Serena Grijalva. And, they, and so they were, they were selected uh, last year when we ran a pilot program before the before the large program was uh, kicked off this year, we wanted to do you know, an experiment, right? You're scientists. Do an experiment with narrow it down to the University of Arizona, undergraduates, optical sciences center, and let's, let's see how it goes. Well, in terms of applications, it went splendidly. Oh my goodness, good applications uh, uh, and two awesome, awesome winners. Um, I'm still on cloud nine about you too. This is, this is just wonderful. Uh, lesson, another lesson that we learned was um, if there is a scholarship that's available to students, but it is not part of the university portfolio, um, advertisement is a little more challenging. So that's why we're here today to get the word out about this scholarship and professional development program so that you can be interested in applying and participating in this. So I'm, I imagine we'll make this, I hope, 
Clarissa will invite us back again next year and we can make this an annual event. And then we'll have more than two pictures. We'll have uh, pictures of another 20 scholars uh, from, from amongst um, uh, the, the community. Okay, so what's next here? This is, next slide, please. So just back, uh, okay. Um, just backing up a little bit, um, just to clarify, Optica, if, if you're not familiar, you, you may be familiar with the Optical Society of America, OSA. So this society was OSA. Mm -hmm. This society was OSA for oh, well over 100 years, founded in, in America and so forth. But over those 100 years, it became really a global society. So to reflect that global society, there was a name change and a, a rebranding. So what you used to know as OSA or Optical Society of America is now Optica. Same society, but better representing the membership. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, uh, what, what is the program? Well, there are 20 scholarships that are, will be awarded to women each year. Each scholarship is $10,000, uh, and the winners will have access to the foundation's professional development programs, including mentorship and so forth, and a unique connection to company donors. Now, what does that mean? Next slide, please. So before we go on to that question, let me just give you a, a, just a brief history. This was a grassroots scholarship. This came from real people, uh, not an institution. Uh, and John Otten, uh, who is actually the person on the right, I know the names are sort of reversed there, but John Otten was a, uh, was a career research engineer, first with the Air Force and then with industry. And all along the way, he noticed the lack of women working in optics in, 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 in the government labs and in industry. He was a hands-on uh, take technology uh, from lab bench to field capability and so forth. Where are the women? So he, he lit the first spark and Liz Rogan on the right jumped right in. Now what's really important about this is Liz Rogan is the CEO of Optica. At that time, it was the Optical Society. Liz Rogan uh, is, she, her education is in finance. Her, she's never been trained in optics. She's not come from the lab bench. She, but, but she believes in you. She believes in us. She believes in women in optics. And so from her personal finances, she contributed $100,000 to get this program on its feet to initiate this program. Now, this was the, the executive director of, of, of Optica. So I was, uh, I'm, 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 I'm just infinitely impressed with Liz Rogan. Next slide, please. So who are these corporate sponsors? Okay, so now that the, now that the program at least is established with some, with, with some initial money, uh, raising $2 million was the, was the challenge to the Optica staff. So they engaged uh, their connections at the, at the companies that you see projected on this slide. Now, what the companies each put in uh, an equal amount of money to raise the $2 million for this scholarship program, and also assigned uh, a person to be the point of contact for the, for the cadre of, uh, of women scholars. In other words, to stay in touch. Uh, I mean, what for? Well, I mean, they're looking, for, they're looking for good interns. They're looking for good hires. They wanna hire the cream of the crop and there they are. So those are the companies um, that, are, that are the sponsors that the scholars will have uh, unique access uh, to, I know it's poor English, but okay. But one other point I wanted to make, um, actually two points. First point is that the, these companies, they're looking to hire at bachelor's degree capabilities, knowledge of optics, master's degrees, PhDs. So what they're looking for in this cadre is a broad spectrum 
bachelor's, master's, PhDs. So please recognize that audience that whoever you are, whatever stage of your education you, know, you find yourself in, you, you could be um, a scholar and jumpstart your career in, in this way. The other point I wanted to make was, okay, you develop your compelling application. It goes into the mix, uh, into Marsh's into Marsh's responsibility bucket there, and it, and these and representatives who are selection committee are going to be seeing a lot of these applications. They're going to be taking notes though, and remembering the compelling applicants. Applicants, even if you don't win. Getting your compelling application out there is really, really important. Next slide, please. So what do you need to do? Self-identify as a woman, undergrad or graduate student, either one, remember the spectrum. I'm gonna add something to item number three. Demonstrate academic and professional potential. So I think, this program, the sponsors of this program are looking at whole person. They're looking at your professional potential, not only your grades, GPA is important, don't get me wrong, but this is not gonna be a simple sorting. I'm sure Marsha will, will emphasize that. It's not just gonna be stack these, these applications up with you know top GPA first and then throw out the rest and publications and so forth. This is whole, whole person. And, and you know, I, th I think people in, 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 uh, in the professions realize the importance of resilience, of demonstrated resilience. People who have been really, really successful in the world have been risk takers who have failed and picked up the pieces and turned that sow's ear into a silk purse, as my dear grandmother would have said from Ireland. So, so at any rate, uh, uh, remember a whole person, it's not all totally GPA uh, driven, professional potential. So when you're working with a person who's going to be writing a recommendation, remember that professional potential, academic and professional potential. Are you going to be a contributing member of the optics community? Difference between having a job and having a profession, having a career, being a student and taking the tests and going home. All right, next, next slide. I'm a victim of too much coffee today. What do you have to do? CV or resume, please have somebody else look at your CV and recipe, recipe, resume, your, your, you know, second, third, fourth set of eyes on everything. It, it just can only help a personal statement, and you can find out more on the website, on the Optical website. Put together your budget. The committee is gonna be looking at, you know, very simply, is this $10,000 gonna make a difference in your education? If it's not, you know, if it's not, don't take it. But, but if it's going to make a difference, let them know, help them do their jobs. Your, your academic transcripts now from two to three years. Okay, if you're a young undergraduate, early undergraduate, those transcripts may be high school, may be community college, please include them. So for example, if you were in high school and you took some college level courses for, for, for credit, that's impressive. That shows you have initiative. So, so academic transcripts aren't just uh, limited to your university if you happen to be in that undergraduate uh, group. And your letters of recommendation, I'm sure that uh, Dr. Williams will help you out with, uh, with, with cultivating your person who's going to be doing the recommendation and selecting the right person. You know, uh, I've been on a lot of selection committees and I think there's a misunderstanding that people have if they can get a signature of a Nobel Prize winner, that's better than, than anything else in the world. Uh, I tell you what, not in my book. I'm I'm looking, and I'm I think it's the same on other people that are on selection committees all over the place, are looking for somebody who knows your capabilities and believes in you. So you need to help them write that sim uh, similarly compelling letter of recommendation. Okay, 
Uh, I think that's about wraps it up, doesn't it? Is that the end of it? Is there anything left? Oh, no, the important part, the website, how to apply. And the really important timely part is that tomorrow is the open season for applications. Okay, so if we could if we could transition to Dr. Williams for a few comments, and we're going to keep the Q and A open for uh, until she finishes her or closed until she finishes her presentation, and then we'll have an open Q and A, and you'll have access to uh, Marcia as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janet. That was wonderful. Clarissa, are, are you going to share my slides, or do you want me to share screen? I'm fine either way. Um, if you want to do it that way, you can control your slides. That might be easiest. Okay. Um, thank you all for having me um, here today. Um, and I just wanted to real quickly thank um, Janet um, and also Optica as an organization for, you know, spearheading this really um, amazing effort. Um, we know when we just look at the statistics that women are significantly underrepresented um, in optical sciences, both in industry and in academia. And we know that this has all kinds of negative implications. Um, for the types of technology we're producing um, and, you know, many other implications for, um, for workplaces as well. So this really large scale effort to support the entry and persistence of women in optics, I think is, is really um, commendable and uh, really exciting. So I'm thrilled to be able to support it in whatever way I can. Um, I thought that what might be useful um, today is just to go over a few suggestions um, really for best practices for putting together a strong application. Um, this is really based on my experience, both as an application reviewer, also as someone who writes a lot of recommendation letters um, for students, um, and really just comes from what I have seen as sort of common things that either make for a stronger application or an application that really just gets passed over. Um, and my goal is for you all to have the strongest applications possible. And then I'll conclude by sharing a little bit about some resources that WISE can offer to support you um, in these efforts. Um, so one of the things that I think is really um, critical, both for personal statements and in terms of CVs and resumes, is that you want to be tailoring your all of your materials for the particular opportunity that you are applying for. I think many students, right, have a CV or a resume that they have created and they just send it out to every different opportunity. Um, really, you should think about your CV at, or resume that you're submitting is an opportunity to really highlight the experience that you have that is most relevant to the particular opportunity. Um, so you can rearrange the order of things um, to highlight those experiences. Some people also um, suggest using bold face to highlight different um, skills um, or um, different aspects of experiences to really draw those things out. Um, during the q and I would love to hear from Marcia and Janet if you have um, thoughts on this as well. Um, for this scholarship in particular, when I look at the website and the description, there are a couple of things that jump out at me. One is obviously the interest in optics, right? That is very clear, right? It's going to be one, one of the things that you want to highlight. It may be really evident in the academic path that you're pursuing or the internships that you've had. But the other thing is leadership potential right, um, and this professional potential. So thinking about what are the experiences that you have had that really speak to those things as well is gonna help your um, application stand out a little more than others maybe. maybe. Um, so this directly connects to the personal statement um, piece. One thing that I have seen over and over again that always just sort of surprises me is that it is not infrequent that you will get a personal statement for a particular scholarship um, opportunity that doesn't answer the prompt given. Um, that is just sort of a, a missed opportunity because many reviewers um, use a rubric or guidelines 
to evaluate applications. And so if you're not tailoring your personal statement to actually answer the prompt given, they might not have the information needed in order to adequately um, evaluate your potential in relation to this particular opportunity. So please, please, please pay attention to what the prompt asks you for, asks you for, and, um, and craft your personal statement in relation to that. Secondly, you also want to provide evidence to support your claims. So for example, um, when I was discussing the CV and resume piece, I pointed out the leadership and professional potential, right, or aspects of this scholarship. So you don't want to just say, I have great leadership potential, right? You want to provide evidence for what you have done that indicates that you have leadership potential, right? That could be something really grand, like you started a, you know, an organization to support women in optics. It could also be something that's smaller scale, like you provided tutoring for other students in a course where they were struggling, right? It does not have to be grand. There's all kinds of ways that you can show leadership and professional potential, but the important thing is just to provide evidence, right? So we talk um, in the, per the personal statement world of not having fluffy language, right? Meaning that language that isn't really grounded in evidence. So as much as possible, um, support your claims with evidence. Um, and the final thing I'll say about personal statements is that you wanna think about what um, makes you, you, or what is unique about your background or your career or professional ambitions and highlight those things, right? There are going to be a lot of applicants for this competition. Um, so you just wanna be sure that you're sharing things about you that are gonna help you stand out um, uh, amongst the pack. Um, and I am always happy to chat with students about their backgrounds and, and their experiences and help you identify those things because I think that Sometimes we don't realize um, the really interesting things that make us unique and make us well qualified because they're just sort of part of who we are. Um, so I'm happy to set up times to chat with anyone that's interested in sort of going through some exercises around that. Um, the final thing I wanted to touch on are recommendation letters. Um, best practice, right? You want to contact your re recommenders early um, and make sure that they are available. Uh, my general threshold is minimum of one week, but I ideally want about a month um, lead time because what that allows me to do is to block out in my schedule enough time to think about this to write a really strong letter. Um, this application is only open through um, mid-March, so um, I would contact people soon if you're planning to, um, to apply and inquire about their availability. Um, the second thing is, and I think that this is really key to getting strong letters, is what I ask students to do is to go through the particular opportunity that they are applying for, to bullet point the criteria that are being used to evaluate their application, and then to provide a list of evidence about them that supports each of those criteria. What that allows me to do is to make sure that I am writing a letter that is tailored to the particular um, competition and to have evidence, right, to back up those claims. So when I'm writing recommendation letters, I use the guidance that I provided you for personal statements to structure how I write recommendation letters, right? So I wanna make sure it's tailored and I wanna make sure that I'm providing evidence. Um, and I feel like I was gonna say one more thing about that and I just forgot it. Oh, um, one thing to be aware of, and I don't know if anyone has had this experience, but I will say it is not unheard of um, to have someone that you ask for a letter of recommendation ask you to draft the letter for them. That is not because they do not believe in you. That is not because they don't think that this is a good opportunity. Most often it is because they simply do not have much time, okay? So don't take that, if someone asks you to do that, don't take that as a criticism. Take it as an opportunity to really reflect on what are all of the really great things about you. Um, and don't be shy about sharing those things, both in your personal statements and then also um, when you're providing information or if you're asked to draft a letter um, for someone. 
Um, the final thing that I wanted to share with you all is just some support that's available through WISE. Um, so this is for this opportunity, but also um, relevant for other top opportunities as well. Um, we do currently have a former science writer, professional science writer, who is volunteering as a writing coach um, for us, which is an awesome resource to have available. So she is in the WISE office, which is at 925 North Tyndall, um, room 202, on Thursdays from 2 to 4.30. It is drop-in hours. You can just swing by um, with a draft, or even if you just have an idea, like you're trying to brainstorm what you should include in your personal statement. She's happy to chat with you about that, um, also to review statements, um, and can provide really useful um, feedback. The other thing is that I am happy to look at personal statements um, and CVs and resumes and provide feedback as well. Um, I do usually need about a week um, to review those things, though, if you catch me on a good day, I might be able to squeeze it in um, in a shorter amount of time. Um, but I'm happy to sort of help support applications as much as I can. I think that this is a really amazing opportunity and I would like to see as many students from the University of Arizona be successful in this as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. We have, we have the rest of the time and we have uh, Marsha Lesky with us as well for people to ask questions or engage us in, in any way. We want to get the word out about this opportunity and we want to get you interested um, in applying and participating. I can answer real quick. There was a question in the chat, um, I think, about the writing coach. Um, I will have to double check with her, but I am 99% positive that she would be able um, to do um, a Zoom or online um, coaching as well. Oh, that's great. You know, the, the other thing, if I could add, uh, when, when you were talking about people asking for drafts, I know in, in my case, a lot of times I'd ask for a really rough draft um, to get the facts straight. I mean, you know, if I'd worked with somebody for 30 years, for crying out loud, I didn't remember blah, 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 blah. So, you know, the details. So I really wanted to make sure that what I was writing in the letter was consistent with, with what was in the application. Um, so that, you know, another, another reason. And bullet, bullets are a brilliant idea, Jill. So I, are, you so are you taking uh, uh, chat questions or will they be oral or... How can we how can we interact with uh, with the audience? Yes, please. If you're on Zoom, you can put your question in the chat. Um, for those of you sitting near me, if you want to come up and ask your question, or I can turn the computer to you. I have a question. Okay, I can turn it to you. Hi. Oh. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. Um, I was looking online at the requirements for the personal statement and I saw it was 500 words or less. Is 500 words a hard cut <laughs> Because I tend to um, go a little bit over. I just you want to know what the, you what know, is completely we, We've gone back and forth on that. And, and I know it can't be a challenge, but I think 500 per, words is basically a, a page long. Okay. And, and uh, so the, the challenge is we, we know that folks can go on and, 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 and on, but it, we have a lot of reviews that, that were things that we're asking our reviewers to look at. And we want to see if you can do that elevator pitch on yourself and get to the point where you can really talk about it and talk about your interests and, and skills and experiences. Um, in a way that is concise as well so that it it, it is it is a cutoff um and we did go back and forth about making it longer but decided to keep it at that 500 words okay for sure it makes sense thank you one thing i will mention in relation to that um and the support that wise can provide um i love helping people figure out how to say things concisely and i love cutting extra language. 
So I am happy to take a red pen very kindly and considerately to anyone's personal statement to help them um, get it within the word limit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> My first draft flopped at like 600 words. So I was like, just do that. <laughs> Can, may I say a couple of words of encouragement, uh, you know, just about the numbers. I made a big deal about, oh my gosh, there's going to be an inundation of, of applications. However, let me, let me uh, talk about the other side of this, uh, of, of this story. And that is, think about where are the centers of optics education? Where is optics really being taught? And where are the best students? So if there are 20 scholarships a year that are going to be awarded, that's a lot. And it's not just the scholarships, it's entry into this cadre of, of what's being you know, touted and what will be high potential emerging professionals. So, so the a huge concentration obviously is Arizona. So I, I'd love for people to take heart and know that, that Arizona has a chance of getting a, a preponderance, of winning a preponderance of these scholarships uh, if, if you put your minds to it. I mean, we just think about where are the students? Now, uh, I, I won't speak for Marsha, but in discussions that, that we had previously in the pilot program, we talked about this is not going to be, as they say, a peanut butter spread, you know, two to this place, two to that place, and so forth. Um, when last I uh, was involved in the discussions, it had to do with the appropriate applications. So please don't get discouraged as a community that, uh, oh, well, I don't stand a chance because you know, because there's the competition is so fierce. Well, yeah, competition is fierce, but you know what? There's a weighting function on that, and uh, and and it's and it's in the favor of of the optic centers. I'll just be blunt. One thing, um, just to piggyback on that, um, that I think is important to verbalize is that there's all kinds of data and research out there that shows that women are less likely to apply for opportunities than men are based on how um, well qualified they personally evaluate themselves for. So for example, um, research shows that men, if they read a, a job application and they think that they have 60% of the requirements, then they'll go ahead and apply. Whereas women need to see themselves as having 90% of the requirements in order to apply. And I think that just sort of speaks to um, sort of the way in which women are enculturated to really feel like you have to be like the superstar in order to be, you know, worthy of even applying for something. But the only way that you can ever achieve anything is by putting yourself out there. Um, and as was mentioned previously, you know, these applications are going to be evaluated, yes, by people that are selecting folks to win, but also folks that are just looking for some of the rising stars out there. So it's important to get your name in front of as many people as possible um, professionally. So don't be scared. And to second that, I would say, take a look at who some of those founding companies were that Janet shared and it's on the website. These are the people who will be sitting on the review committee, who will be looking at these things. So you're getting your your information and uh, names in front of some, some really great companies. And I, I can see some questions in the chat and rather than try to type them, I thought I'd, I'd just try to answer them really quickly. Um, Melissa asked about the timing of the submissions. The, the reviewers will not get the applications until it, it closes. So they're not gonna be reviewing them early. So getting them in like the first week isn't gonna give you some sort of competitive advantage, um, but definitely get them in by the deadline. Um, uh, getting phone calls like the day of or the day before saying, I'm having trouble getting finishing the submission is not something that we wanna be dealing with um, here. So it, I would say get into the system and, and the apply system 
is something that we are we just started using last year. Um, it is a good system, but I would you can go back and forth. You can go in and start it, and you don't have to complete it all. So it'll give you a chance to see how it all functions. So I encourage you to do that early at least. Um, and then the insight over letter of recommendation writers and uh, Jill and Janet, you might have some thoughts on that question as well, but um, I would say, you know, this is, I wanted to highlight something that I'm not sure it, it, that I know is on the website, but because it is open for undergraduate and graduate level students, we do recognize that there's going to be different levels of experience, especially in optics and photonics. Um, so please be aware that we do know that. Um, and in terms of letters of recommendation, we're, we're asking for two and I, I don't, I can't sit in the reviewers minds, but I would say that um, at least one of them should be from someone in science. Um, I know as an undergrad, you might not have taken optics classes yet or a ton of optics uh, classes yet. So, um, but someone who is in the scientific community or a professor, I think I would encourage at least one of your recommendations to come from something like someone like that. And thank you very, very much, Marcia. And I, I would just amplify and say, yeah, as an undergraduate, they, you know, the, the professors might not know you very well, but it's so it's worth it's worth it to uh, to make an appointment and take your materials and say this. I'm asking you for a letter of recommendation because I respect you and your position in the optics community. And uh, and I think there's I, th I think that'll go a, a very long way. I'm an undergraduate, but I want to show that I have potential to be um, uh, a contributor to the optics community, and this is why. And I, I think I think a face-to-face -face appointment. Um, take a deep breath, and and make and make the appointment, and just say I'm I'm doing this because I respect you as a member of the optics community. Now, one one thing that I uh, I don't know. Let me put just put this out there. I, I wouldn't recommend flocking all to the same professor because if, if you have one professor, for example, you know, that teaches a basic course and you really like that professor, they get and they get a lot of requests, they're gonna have to rank. And, and you can see as a reviewer, you can see that in the language. I mean, this is my number one candidate, for example. Well, then, you know. So I, I would I would go for I, I agree with Marsha I'd certainly go for somebody in in the community but I'd I'd go for somebody that you can ask I I'd love it if you would rank me as the, as the number one so get get a sense of how that recommendation is going to go before you leave the office uh, I've been involved in in a selection of uh, in fact, some Optica award selections where, oh my word, here comes a recommendation from a professor. Uh, I remember one very distinctly said, I haven't seen this guy in half a year. I don't, you know, where the heck has he been? And, it, you know, it's because I think the person emailed him and asked him for this letter of recommendation. And it's just, it, it's just, you have to get a, you have to get a good sense that this person is going to to do the job that you want. Any recommendation doesn't do. This person has to, has to be convincing and say, candidate has great potential to be a, a contributing, vibrant part of the optics community, has a great interest in, an op, in optics. And this is why, as Jill was saying, you know, the, the following reasons and so forth. Um, so I think that letter of recommendation is, is really important important enough for you to personally engage. We have a, oh, sorry, I, we had a few other quick questions in the, the chat and then we can go back to the room. Um, the, for those new in optics, how do we emphasize uh, talking about optics in our application? And that's a very fair question. And that's why if you look at it, we talk about, 
you know, tell us about your interests in physics, math, engineering, or any stories about how you understand optics, like you might not have taken an entire class in optics yet, but it was part of something that you've done. Um, I'm going to give you a, a very odd example. Janet talked about how Liz doesn't have a background in optics. Neither do I. My background is technically environmental science. So when I started working here, I would be, I was able to talk to our members and, and start engaging with folks by relating it to how I know optics, how I understood optics played in the environmental arena and impacts it had for water quality or different things like that. So mm -hmm. I think that there's ways to talk about your interests, even if you don't have like hardcore publications and, and, and numerous coursework in it. Um, so think about it that way is what I would encourage you to do. Um, and then the other question was about academic expenses. And yes, everything that you've listed here, I, I think we just want to get a, a picture of um, things like housing, tuition, books, those kinds of things, everything that it takes, you know, for care and feeding of students these days, which is a lot. Um, so hopefully that answers that. Question. I have a question related to that. If people um, have um, caregiving responsibilities, like they take care of children or elders, can those sorts of expenses be included? Absolutely. Absolutely talk about those. And keep in mind, you'll be getting, or the recipients will be getting this scholarship and we're not asking for like receipts afterwards. Uh, um, we're of course hoping that you spend it on those kinds of expenses and not like blowing it all on new shoes or something like that. But um, one thing I will say is we talked to, Janet talked a little bit about visibility and we are gonna be uh, utilizing the winners to talk about themselves, their work, but encouraging others to do it. And that might include, so, and I was able to use this fund, these funds to help me you know, make sure I didn't have any debt over books or things that whatever, or was able to, to use it on this, um, some equipment that I wanted to buy or whatever, however you used it, it might become part of the story you talk about when you're doing some of these visibility events. So um, just keep that in mind. That's a great idea. If I could circle back to the, uh, to the question having to do with, uh, optics and how do you emphasize uh, your interest and role in optics, you know, I think I would first visit the Optica website, optica.org, and take and take a look uh, at, at the expansive applications of optics. I mean, optics is pervasive. So you, so you've been involved in a different area, like, you know, like Marcia said, environmental. Well, you can find that on on the web, uh, on the on the uh, optics website. Uh, so I think by by looking at that website and taking a look at what all is involved in covered in optics and photonics, by the way, you can tie your work to the greater optics and photonics subject. Uh, I know that people go right to what classes have I taken. Yeah, that's one metric. Take, really take a look at that uh, optica.org and see what people are doing in the field of optics. And I think you'll be amazed at how you fit. And I've just dropped two new links in the chat. One um, to our technical groups, which I think is a great location to find information about exactly what Janet just mentioned, the full depth and breadth of what it means, what optics means, because it means so much and it is involved in so many different things. Um, so, and that page is a great page to kind of look through and see some of those, those different interest areas. And then our history section, which is also um, very interesting as well. So I had another question about the personal statement. Um, I know we're supposed to talk about our experiences in optics. How technical of a language should we use? Are the people on the review committee 
well versed in optics, should we not really get that technical because of the limit of work? Or it's, um, what's kind of the thought there? Um, that's a very good question. And I, the people that will be reviewing it are people that are in the world of optics. So there are people that work at those committee, those, um, those companies that are some of our founding donor com companies or other volunteers at Optica are the review committee. So the, these are people that are optics people. Um, but I'm not sure we're necessarily looking for sort of a 500 word dissertation in optics. If you will, it's more, uh, I think your personal interest. I'm trying to see how we're phrasing it in um, on the website. Uh, you know, talk, let me, let me see, let me pull up the website, which isn't live yet. So I'm just, just, it just asked for you to describe your experiences and interests related to any kind of field within optics. So laser science, fiber optics, quantum theory, whatever, but I don't think we're looking for super technical language. Okay, okay, just look and Janet might have more after, ideas on that. After 40 years of you know evaluating applications for for positions, for example, what what we were always looking for was in, in when a question like that was asked, you know, what's your experience in optics, for example, we would look for what was the need in the field or the, your curiosity, what was your role in whatever that project was, and then what was the impact. So okay. we were looking for the description of exactly what happened. We, because everybody's not a specialist in your particular field, but they're looking for, I mean, what, whatever you choose to talk about in optics, like what, like what, what is say the, the challenge or the, or the curiosity, the emerging field, you know, what, what, what's the frontier out there? Why, why were you engaged in something? I mean, the, the brand new frontier, what, what was the big challenge and what, what's your role? And, and then what's, what's the impact? So those were the three key questions that we would ask on, of, uh, in evaluating the um, applications when I was working. Okay, thank you, that, that was helpful. And if someone asked about the review committee, um, we are working on nailing that down. Essentially, if you take a look at the website and the, the contributors for that, we're gonna be pulling people from those companies to serve, but we don't, not, all, not everyone has identified exactly who from Google is gonna be serving on this, but someone will be. And for example, um, and we may have also a few other uh, folks from Optica's governance or leadership that, that may be sitting in as well. Um, I hope to have that, those names listed soon, but um, not sure when exactly I'll have them up, but they likely will be up before the, uh, the close of this. I just want to flag real quick, um, just some um, some thoughts for professional um, preparation. I think that that question that Melissa just asked about the selection committee is a really smart one. So knowing as much about the review criteria, right, how if there's a rubric that will be used to um, evaluate applications, all of that helps you tailor your um, applications. I would also suggest not being too, I mean, for a competition like this, I mean, there's 10, if I counted right, eight or 10 different companies, right, who are founding partners, you're not going to be able to appeal to every one of those in your materials. So I would not get overly stressed out about that. Um, but I will say, um, if you are interviewing for scholarships, fellowships, jobs, any information you can get on who the interview committee will be, because those are usually smaller, is a really, really smart thing to do, just when you're thinking about other aspects of your careers. Thank you. I really appreciate that feedback. 
it is it's nice to know a little bit about more but no to not get stuck on it as much as I can sometimes and I and I will say we're still um th this is new that like we 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 were fortunate to have sort of the pilot projects before but this is a new program for us and so um we're we're still learning as well and uh that's why we don't fully have everyone and we might also likely bring in some of our optic ambassadors if you're familiar with the the ambassador program or other folks that that can help us um really take a look at this because in part we don't know how many to expect um i can give you an example recently um we launched last year the amplify um scholarship uh, focused on uh, black scientists and engineers and our target and hope was to get if like our our stretch goal was to hopefully maybe get uh, 40 or 50 people applying to that and we had over 60 um, and and so we're not really sure what to expect in terms of the number of applicants to get for this um, but we are excited that we're give, be, being able to give out 20 thanks to all of the the wonderful contributors we have for this and the work that that janet has done in 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 making this happen ha helping us make this happen has just been amazing thank you for that great are there any last questions Okay, great. Well, from my perspective, I just want to thank Janet again and um, tell you guys you're very lucky to have such a, a strong advocate there for you all. And we're really looking forward um, to getting your applications. And I'm here if you have any questions on this or any of our other programs. I hope you take, a, take the time to take a look at all of the other things Optica has to offer. Um, and both from different scholarships and grants uh, to all of the different engagement opportunities we have. And I'm happy to put my email address in here too, if you have any other questions for me about this or anything else. Yes, um, Jill, Janet, if you guys are comfortable putting your emails in the chat, please do so, um, so we can have additional questions. Oh, sure. There you go. And thank you, Marcia. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Clarissa. Thank you, everyone, for giving us this opportunity. You know, I, I keep thinking change doesn't just happen. It's programs like this that drive change. So thank you for being part of a very positive change. Thank yes, you. from WIO, from Prism Week, I just want to thank Janet for reaching out to me and making this happen. Um, Marsha, Jill, thank you so much. And this is recorded, so we'll put it up on the website. And if you have any questions, please email them. Or if you forget their emails, email me and I'll put you in contact. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Best thank of luck you. to everyone. Yes, good luck. <laughs>